Do you desire RPGs? Spectacular stories, compelling characters, and wondrous worlds await in the total of 70 games I mention in this video, including the bonus ones. Hello, my name is GamerZack, and welcome to my 30 upcoming PC role-playing games for 2021 and 2022 list. Now, these coming years contain not just the uniqueness of indie gems, but also the promise of AAA epics, so I'm certain at least some of these will catch your eye. I've spent a lot of time on this, so if you do appreciate what you see here, please do like, subscribe, and share the video with your RPG communities, as it really does keep this channel alive and these videos being made. Also, be sure to vote on your favorite game from the list over at gamersact.com slash listhub, Extra games, bonus behind the scenes, and a Discord community you can join are all there, or follow on Twitter to reach me directly. You can also subscribe to this channel for more like these lists, looks at new games, and nostalgic gaming content, and follow on Twitch to see me live. Alright, now let's get started. Beginning our journey with isometric and more classic RPGs, it'll get more diverse later in the list, it's Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous by Owlcat Games. A destroyed realm, forbidden magics, hordes of demons, an evil lord, and a hero rising makes this a pretty classic setup for this classic CRPG. Take part in a grand, non-linear adventure and choose your mythic path, race, and class. Get to know and even romance companions. And there will be a crusade mechanic for a strategic layer to gameplay, where you'll be building up armies and conquering lands. All of this is using the Pathfinder 1st Edition rule set as well, which many are a fan of, I know. Footage seen so far is pretty decent, but there is a lot of hype and backing for this one. Two million dollars raised on Kickstarter from a $300,000 goal, so expectations are through the roof. Owlcat has a history with games like this as well, so with experience and budget, we can expect Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous to be a good one to watch moving forward. Continuing with Isometric for now, Alaloth Champions of the Four Kingdoms by Gamera Interactive. Set in a vibrant fantasy world, here we can expect fast-paced, skill-based action, attempting to bring some souls-like combat to an isometric game, along with a deep narrative inspired by classics. Four kingdoms divided, you will need to unite them against the dark god Alaloth, Gameplay includes a reputation system, quests, customizable characters, companions, world exploration, and crafting. So far, it seems to be shaping up well, and although it's kind of leaning towards an action RPG, the slower and more paced combat does keep it from being too explosive. Whether it actually feels good to play will need to be tested before judging. Stated to have a 2021 release, it shouldn't be too long until you can play Alaloth Champions of the Four Kingdoms if everything is timed correctly. And then we have Dark Envoy by Event Horizon. A dark, broken world where tensions are high and technology clashes with magic for dominance. Explore the world in your skyship, delve into procedural dungeons, and use a new RPG system that promotes experimentation and adaptation. Also, your choices should have an impact on the world. Four base classes, 16 specializations, and mixing of skill trees, there should be lots of flexibility for your characters, and combat is free of RNG. Real time with active, slow, or pause, which is a popular system nowadays as well. We got a much better look at gameplay in 2020 with new reveals, and it's looking a lot better than a year ago. Intending to deliver a release in 2021, Dark Envoy should be playable soon enough. Next up we've got Black Geyser, Couriers of Darkness by Grape Ocean Technologies. Set in the world of Yerengal, this is an isometric party-based RPG where chaos and despair spread throughout the lands. Expect a range of fantasy races, choosing of classes, and magical spells in this classics-inspired CRPG. Party up to five characters, or go it solo with real-time gameplay and combat. Meanwhile, there's free-roaming exploration, branching dialogue, romance options, and some special things like planting items as a thief, adaptive shape-shifting, and brewing, along with other interesting quirks. 
Raising over $145,000 and hitting many stretch goals, this should be as complete a game as intended as long as nothing has gone wrong, which was a worry as updates were rare in 2019. Set to launch in 2021 after a backer beta in 2020, Black Geyser Couriers of Darkness seems to be back on track and will be releasing soon, hopefully. Now, roll for initiative! Solasta Crown of the Magister by Tactical Adventures. Staying true to tabletop roots, this has a license to use the D&D SRD 5.1 rule set, so expect to be rolling those dice and getting exactly what you want. Play four heroes, each with unique skills, and choose your destiny on an epic team adventure. Combat is squad, turn-based, and tactical, and prepare to think in three dimensions as the game board will include climbing, jumping, or even flying around obstacles. It looks great and really seems to be committing to the essence of classic D&D, which is perfect if you're looking for something a bit more proper. After listing this last year with an uncertain release, it went into early access towards the end of 2020 to a lot of very positive reviews on Steam. So it seems the last dark crown of the Magister hit exactly what it was aiming for and should be completing development in 2021. And then we have Wigman, The Return of the Hidden Knights by The Scholastics. Calling itself a story-driven, skill-based, top-down RPG inspired by Tolkien's writings, this game takes a few interesting approaches to gameplay. The mouse will be an extension of your weapon, mouse gestures controlling blows and dodges, which sounds a bit like the game Exanima. It allows for a lot of flexibility and skill, but also it's not a system that everyone will enjoy, as the difficulty can be high and if not refined, it can feel clunky. Questing will be as expected, but they promise not to be too generic, and with accurate physics collisions, upgradable equipment will be important and each of the many pieces you equip will play a role. It all sounds pretty great and could be refreshing with the approach as long as it's all delivered and the pieces fit together at the end of the day. Planning to have an early access release early 2021, the base systems will be in place and development will continue on story chapters, so Wigmund, The Return of the Hidden Knights, should be able to fully release later on in 2021. And next we've got The Waylanders by Gato Studio. Classic party-based RPG inspired by Celtic mythology, Dragon Age, and Baldur's Gate, time travel is an interesting addition to the game as your party goes between the distinct Celtic and medieval eras. There's full character customization, formation-based tactical combat, in-depth companions, and multiple endings. Kickstarted for just over its $150,000 goal, it went into early access mid-2020 to mixed reviews. Development has been a little rough, but seemingly is catching up on the roadmap timeline. A combat overhaul, a huge amount of bug fixes, and a ton of polish is needed and planned, so we can hope it turns out well. Aiming for a spring 2021 release, the Waylanders should release soon, but I wouldn't be surprised if it's delayed, all things considered. And now we're going into some pixel art games, which is a personal favorite of mine. Scald Against the Black Priory by Scape IT. What looks like an RPG from the 80s, this is a retro-style turn-based game that's set in a dark and gritty fantasy universe full of tragic heroes, violent deaths, and eldritch horrors. Inspired by Ultima, but with the ambition and narrative of a modern RPG, you'll develop and lead a party of up to six characters engaging in tactical combat, dynamic tree-based dialogue, and choose-your-own-adventure sequences. After a very successful Kickstarter, this one has gone into early access towards the end of 2020. Overall, it's a very interesting project, and personally, I'm a fan of old school and pixel art. But whether Scald Against the Black Priory will have enough modernization to keep the game relevant today, or whether the ultra-classic approach can be successful on its own, remains to be seen. Now for some cyberpunk, but not that one, Mecha Jammer by Well Not Studios. Gritty pixel art with 3D touches, the visual style here really harkens back to the RPGs of the 90s. 
Fleeing a galaxy-wide war, your party crashes onto a syndicate-controlled colony where you'll be navigating oppressive regimes and deep ruins abandoned after centuries of turmoil. Combat is simultaneous turn-based with skills and on-the-fly commands given to units. Now, this game was originally called Copper Dreams and had a small Kickstarter fundraising that netted $40,000 way back in 2016. Not a huge amount, and as the game has continued development, the rebranding to Mecha Jammer has seemingly come with some gameplay changes as well. The original outline was to be a party-based, turn-based pen and paper RPG with a cyberpunk setting, but it's now looking a little action-y. Even the visual style has changed, which I think is an improvement, but whether gameplay strays too far from the original vision, and whether it'll be good, well, we'll have to see what it's like. And the name that gets me every year, Death Trash by Crafting Legends. Akin to Fallout, but grittier, grimier, and grosser, the name captures it all. An RPG set in a post-apocalyptic world where cosmic horrors crave humanity, but instead get punks with shotguns and jokes. This really leans into the pixel art aesthetic, and combat is real-time and action, but there's also stealth, dialogue, inventory management, skills, crafting, and psi powers. After customizing your character, journey through the story-based campaign with plenty of freedom for side missions. Meaning to enter early access on Steam in 2020, delays meant that it's been pushed back and now at the start of 2021, it's doing some final testing before becoming playable publicly. So it shouldn't be much longer until we can get into the gritty, pixely world of Death Trash. Going a bit more sci-fi, it's Colony Ship, a post-Earth role-playing game by Iron Tower Studio. A turn-based party-based RPG set aboard a generation ship on the way to Proxima Centauri. With a detailed skill-based character system, recruitable party members, three main factions, choices with consequences in quests, and branching dialogue trees, this is promising to be an isometric sci-fi classic RPG with tactical combat. All of this taking place on the ship post-mutiny makes it pretty different from the other games in terms of environments you can explore, but hopefully it's varied enough within the game itself, and every part of the ship has unique characteristics as well. Slated for a Fall 2021 release window, Colony Ship, a post-Earth role-playing game is on the way, but if you're still not sure about it, there is a demo on Steam you can check out now. Next up, we've got Game Deck by Anshar Studios. This is one that's trying to be different as you're playing a game detective that solves crimes in virtual worlds. It's single-player, non-combat, and cyberpunk-themed as an isometric RPG and without combat gameplay, as it's more about gathering evidence, investigating relationships, untangling facts, and more that you would be expecting to do as a detective. Emulation of tabletop RPGs is a focus when it comes to character development and decision making, so expect there to be complexity, with all the pieces fitting together and consequences for the choices you make. It was looking decent, but rather clunky a year ago, but progress has been made and it seems to be coming together. But with great detective RPGs like Disco Elysium out there, it might be hard to live up to the quality of writing and polish that some would expect. After delaying a 2020 release, Game Deck is now deducing a 2021 release window, which could be soon or it may be pushed back again if complications arise. And then we have Broken Roads by Drop Bear Bites. Clearly inspired by Fallout, but going even further back in its roots, this is an isometric post-apocalyptic Australia where there's a content-rich and densely crafted world to explore with your party of up to six members. Combat is turn-based and tactical, but the thing that's special here is the morality system, with an actual moral compass that influences dialogue, quests, and character development. Visually, it looks a little cartoony and a little unrefined compared to some of the other games on this list, so a concern is that the aesthetic might not convey the intended feeling strongly enough but there is still time for polish. Scheduled for a late 2021 release, there is a chance that this gets delayed into 2022, but we should be seeing it all come together for Broken Roads over the next year. 
Next, the big one that a lot of people are hyped for, Darkest Dungeon 2 by Red Hook Studios. The sequel to the critically acclaimed turn-based roguelike dungeon crawling RPG. This has been an exciting prospect for many these past couple years. Test your mettle and be ready to be driven to the brink of madness or beyond. We can expect a similar gameplay as its predecessor, but hopefully with more and better, as you armor yourself with purpose and provision so your party can survive the journey ahead. There's meant to be a new 3D look, a new direction for monsters and heroes, and other tweaks and changes to keep things fresh, but hopefully not lose what made the first game special. Early access is planned for 2021 on the Epic Store, which I know will upset many, but it will come to Steam once it's complete. So we'll be getting to play this soon, and we'll see how Darkest Dungeon 2 develops over the following year, and if it's worth the wait. In a similar vein, it's Vagris, The Riven Realms by Lost Pilgrim Studio. Explore a dark continent, experience a branching narrative, engage in turn-based combat, manage your crew, and encounter a colorful cast of characters. You'll be embarking on a perilous journey across a forsaken dark fantasy realm in this post-apocalyptic RPG with strategy elements. Combat does look very Darkest Dungeons inspired, and over the last year many of the mechanics seem to be turning out to be something that looks pretty solid. A year ago they raised $50,000 on FIG, and now it's almost tripled to over $145,000. So interest and support are relatively high. Vagras The Riven Realms also entered Early Access mid-2020 to few but very positive reviews and has plans to fully release in 2021, but could take longer if things happen. And now for a tactical RPG, we've got King's Bounty 2 by 1C Entertainment. Attempting to combine fantasy and realism, Beloved genre tropes mixed with down-to-earth grittiness is the stage for this realm-wide struggle. Boasting an unpredictable, non-linear story and a highly cinematic experience, your choices and dialogue are meant to have significant consequences as you play three different characters, each with their own story. You'll be aligning yourself with ideals as well, being strength, art, order and anarchy. Meanwhile, battles are squad-based and tactical. From what's been shown off, the game is really nice to look at, and the focus of gameplay does seem to be on deep and rich experiences, and after some skepticism, it seems to be winning people over. Though after so many years since the last King's Bounty game, changes and modernizations might make it feel quite different from its predecessors. This one is now currently heading towards a 2021 release, so barring any further delays, it won't be much longer. And now for something a little different, Sacred Fire by Poetic. Uniquely calling itself a psychological RPG with a big focus on choices in a world inspired by ancient Caledonia. Controlling your emotions and outsmarting opponents are the key to victory here. Foster allies, fight battles, and find your way through a branching narrative to become who you have to be to stop the invading Romans. Customizing your character will include their mind. Combat includes psychological tactics, otherwise use diplomacy to resolve conflicts. And unlocking motives, weaknesses, and secrets can help you along the way. They also promise a no-filler story, which is a great promise as long as there is enough to keep the game going. Which it seems the key here is a shorter but replayable experience, as the game has five unique endings. A shorter but more meaningful game certainly has a big appeal nowadays, as many don't have time for everlasting epic expeditions, but if you are looking for something bigger, then Sacred Fire may end up being not quite enough for you in 2021. And now for a couple JRPGs, starting with Chris Tales by Dreams Incorporated and SYCK. First glance, and you might already love how this game looks. Pretty 2D art and a game that's a love letter to classic JRPGs. A unique mechanic about this is that you experience the past, present, and future all at the same time, which sounds like it could be confusing or cool if they do it well. 
Battles will be strategic turn-based combat and you'll be able to warp your enemies into the past or future and you'll be discovering a beautiful world aboard an airship or on a boat while meeting characters and uncovering the Empress's plot to destroy the world. Initially setting a 2020 release date, like many games it was delayed into early 2021, but there is a debut demo that you can check out for free right now. So if you're interested but not convinced, you can see what Chris Tales is like for yourself, and then if you're still looking forward to the full release. Then for one that may stay on consoles for a little bit before coming to PC, it's Final Fantasy XVI by Square Enix. The legacy of the crystals has shaped history for long enough. A line sounding thoroughly Final Fantasy and the latest title in the decades-long series is on the way. Set in the world of Valisthea, a land blessed in the light of the Mother Crystals, an uneasy peace has settled. But things have started to crack as a blight threatens to destroy the realms. It's a Final Fantasy game, so we can expect the usual cast of characters, ultimate evil, grand summons and all that. But how this addition will improve or change from 15 will have to be seen later. After a reveal in 2020, more specific information is scheduled to be released in 2021, so if you've been waiting for it, details are on the way. We can expect this to be a console exclusive for a while, but it should also be coming to PC eventually, much like the other recent Final Fantasy releases. And now moving on, we've got Fable by Playground Games. After a few years of this being known of but with no details, a new Fable game has finally been properly announced, but just with a cinematic trailer. Explore a land of fantastical creatures and wondrous places in a game that's set to be a new beginning for the franchise, so it's a reboot of sorts. Besides speculation, not too many details can be confirmed, but a sense of humor is embedded in the trailer and we can of course expect it to be a fantasy role-playing game. Swords, magic, fairies, and Albion shining in the distance. It seems to be thoroughly fable, but it is an entirely different team developing it from the previous games, and it's unclear if they will be able to capture the subtleties that made the original games the favorites of many. Hype is huge, but all we can do is wait for a proper gameplay reveal for Fable. Then we've got Hogwarts Legacy by Avalanche Software, the Harry Potter RPG that people have been dreaming of for decades is supposedly on the way. An immersive open-world action RPG, you'll be taking control of your own wizarding story as you journey through familiar and new locations. Customize your character, craft potions, master spells, upgrade talents, and more in 1800s Hogwarts. Although the world is based on the books, this being set way before, it's an original story, and considering the controversies, JK Rowling isn't directly involved with the production or writing of this game. Take that as you will. Generally, it should be the most developed and intricate Harry Potter game to date, and there's a lot of expectations, so pressure's on. It was initially planned to release in 2021, but it's been pushed back to 2022, meaning you're gonna have to wait a bit longer for your invitation to Hogwarts Legacy. Continuing with the big games, Dragon Age 4 by Bioware. Enter a vibrant world of rugged wilderness, treacherous labyrinths, and glittering cities. A new hero is needed and you'll be forming a fellowship to face the dangers ahead. Friendship, drama, and romance included. Since it's still relatively early in development, confirmation on specific gameplay mechanics and systems are still not available, but we can hope that it's all improved since the previous title and we can expect usage of some new technology in a story about having no power, based on some interviews. Loosely expected for a 2022 release, it'll be a little while before you'll be able to play Dragon Age 4, so details are probably going to be provided through 2021, and hopefully it will be completed over the next couple years. And now a game that's shrouded in mystery, Elden Ring by From Software. After Dark Souls, Bloodborne, and Sekiro, there is much hype and high expectations of the latest up-and-coming From Software game, but the whole thing is still basically a blur. 
George R. R. Martin is involved, so that may be interesting when it comes to the story and setting, and it's meant to have an open world ready for exploration. It's reportedly the biggest game yet in terms of sheer volume, and gameplay is supposed to focus more on RPG elements compared to Sekiro, and character creation is supposed to be back as well. So it should be more like Dark Souls instead of Sekiro. Really, there hasn't been any new reveals or confirmations over the last year, so there isn't much to do besides wait for more Elden Ring details if you're looking forward to this one. And then, going first person, Dying Light 2 by Techland. The fate of the city is in your hands. Fifteen years after humanity lost to the virus, the infected world is plunged into a modern dark age where bandits, factions, and survivors scavenge during the day and the infected roam at night. Tough choices to make will have huge impacts on entire regions, and you'll be able to play the entire campaign in up to four-player co-op. There is of course a lot of action, parkour, and zombies to kill, so I am aware that some of you might consider Dying Light 2 to be a bit too action-y and not RPG enough to count in this list, but quite a few people are really hyped for it and there are still a lot of RPG-centric things to keep it here. One big note is that many were interested in this because the story was initially being written by Chris Avalon who has since been removed from the project due to the controversies, so take that as you will. Meanwhile, there is no clear release window set for Dying Light 2, so it might still be a while before we get to play it anyway. Then we've got Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines 2 by Hardsuit Labs. What kind of monster will you be? Sired in an act of vampire terrorism, your existence sparks a war with uneasy alliances nestled in a sprawling conspiracy in the city of Seattle. Take on your foes in first-person combat using a myriad of melee weapons and firearms, but of course you being a vampire, maybe you don't need any of those things. Choices are meant to matter as well, with different paths and outcomes, faction choices, and how human you remain. The announcement of this did surprise and delight many as the original game is regarded highly in terms of RPG standards, even if it was eclipsed by the release of Half-Life 2. Also, this is being published by Paradox, so expect DLC and add-ons sold separately. Just as a point there. Roughly scheduled for a 2021 release, we can hope it makes it on time, but with some recent organizational changes and other global complications, I wouldn't be surprised if Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines 2 gets delayed further as it was already supposed to release in 2020. And then for one that's interesting but still not very clear, The Wayward Realms by Once Lost Games. What's being speculated to be a kind of spiritual successor to the Elder Scrolls Daggerfall from the original developers of Daggerfall? Nothing has really been shown, but there's quite a bit of information. Aiming to revivify the RPG genre with this new open-world fantasy RPG utilizing classic design philosophy with modern quality-of-life advancements, this is labeling itself a new subgenre, the Grand RPG. Set on a group of over a hundred islands, factions vie for power and dynasties strive to maintain the status quo while upstarts seek to earn their place. That sounds like an ever-changing world with a dynamic dynasty system, so maybe it's kind of like a first-person RPG in a world of Crusader Kings? Which sounds really good. But specifics are vague. You'll be venturing through strange lands with humans, elves, dwarves, and more unusual races, and it all sounds cool, but with nothing revealed yet, this is more of a space to watch. One big question is how much will this game take from the later Elder Scrolls titles? Daggerfall is a favorite of many, but modern gamers often find it difficult to play, so the Wayward Realm will need to strike that balance to compete or carve its own niche entirely. Speaking of the Elder Scrolls, Starfield and the Elder Scrolls VI by Bethesda Game Studios. I'm combining two games into one here since Bethesda likes to keep things secret. Starfield is a new sci-fi RPG that has a vague, spacey trailer, and Elder Scrolls VI is a new fantasy RPG with a vague landscape trailer. Rumors and guesses point to the next Elder Scrolls game being set in either Hammerfell or High Rock, 
and a trademark was registered for the name Redfall, so things point to that region. It's been stated that the engine used for Bethesda games is getting the biggest improvement jump since Morrowind to Oblivion, so we can hope much of the jankiness is fixed for both Starfield and The Elder Scrolls VI, but it would be prudent to be skeptical of that. Now, I don't expect Elder Scrolls to release in 2021, but Starfield might, if not then 2022, but it's hard to call because Bethesda likes last-minute announcements. Meanwhile, Bethesda's reputation took a big hit with Fallout 76, but it seems that the MMO itself has recovered from one of the worst launches in gaming and is now, believe it or not, a popular and well-liked game. It all still curbs the height we can have for these games though, and I guess we just have to see how Starfield and The Elder Scrolls VI turn out. Now, some people are tired of waiting for The Elder Scrolls VI, so here is Avowed by Obsidian Entertainment. A fantasy RPG set in the Pillars of Eternity universe, this dual-wielding story-driven game is one that many are anticipating. At first glance, it looks like Skyrim, but made by Obsidian. So it could be Skyrim with better writing, and I know there are plenty who want just that. After Obsidian made New Vegas, they notably have not worked with any other Bethesda games since, and instead made Outer Worlds, which wasn't necessarily absolutely amazing, but it was definitely a good shot at the Bethesda-style game. Now, with Avowed, it seems like Obsidian aren't done taking on Bethesda, and with The Elder Scrolls VI seemingly a long way away, Avowed might be able to compete very handily. And now for a couple big classics to wrap up the main list, but there are more bonus games, don't worry. Baldur's Gate 3 by Larian Studios. Gather your party and return to the Forgotten Realms. A Mind Flayer implants a parasite into your brain, awakening abilities but also threatening to corrupt, turning you into an ultimate evil. Online multiplayer for up to four players, original characters, evolved turn-based combat, and pen and paper abilities like jumping, shoving, and more environmental interactions are part of the gameplay. This is from the creators of Divinity Original Sin 2, so you can see some similarities there, but it should still remain Baldur's Gate. So hopes are high that this can be the next great fantasy RPG, and hopefully living up to the Baldur's Gate title. The game released into early access, and although impressive at parts, it wholly was unfinished, and playing it felt much like reading the first draft of a novel. I would recommend waiting for full release and experiencing Baldur's Gate 3 in all of its completed glory when it's actually ready. For the final main entry, but don't forget there's 40 bonus games after this one, Diablo 4 by Blizzard Entertainment. Announced a while back now, the latest iteration of the classically dark action RPG is being formed and you will need to prepare to face the unspeakable horrors that blight the lands. Endless demons to slaughter, deep character customizations, randomized dungeons and a dynamic open world, explore sanctuary that as expected is having some troubles due to the return of Lilith who was summoned to usher in an age of darkness and misery. There does seem to be a return to a darker, grittier version of Diablo, which seems to have been received well, and items, inventory management, and the skill tree are being overhauled. Having said that, how production of Blizzard games are going on right now seems unclear and slow, since after Blizzard announced a bunch of big games, not much has been heard of since, and specifically Diablo 4 was still being labeled pre-alpha in 2020. Blizzard betas tend to be basically finished games though, so a release by 2022 is feasible. Now, this is more of an action RPG, which I've been trying to not focus on on this list too much, but it's hard to ignore the interest and impact Diablo 4 has in this genre, and we'll have to hope it avoids the pitfalls of Diablo 3. Alright, now for 40 bonus games, but if you made it this far, you probably enjoyed your time here and it would be greatly appreciated if you could like, subscribe, share this video and ring that bell, as it really does help keep this channel running. Head over to gamerzack.com slash listhub to vote on your favorite game from the list and for bonus stuff. Also, you can support more directly by using the Humble Bundle referral link to buy games, perusing my gaming merch store where I design my own products, or checking out the Patreon or Subscribestar to really help keep the lights on. 
all linked down below along with the Discord community, Twitch live streams and social media accounts where I'm active and contactable. Okay, now for 40 more games and there are just so many games calling themselves RPGs nowadays, it's impossible to mention them all. But let me give you a sense of the scene. Starting with some variety bonus games here. Realms Beyond Ashes of the Fallen. This is one I've been listing for a couple years, but there's been no major updates for months, so I'm not sure how that's going. Project Witchstone, a pen and paper RPG that's in development, but super unclear if and when it will be released. Odd Gods. I've listed this for years and there's no significant update. I'll list it again when there's more to show. Isles of Adela. This has been taking years and maybe could get a 2023 release, but it's got mixed reviews in early access on Steam. Hightail. No launch plan, but this is going well. It's expanded its production team and reviewing everything to do with the game to make sure it's good. Edge of Eternity. I listed this for the last two years and it's a JRPG that's been in early access since 2018 with very positive reviews. It should get a 2021 full release, maybe. Encased. I listed this one as well for the last two years. It went into early access in 2019, and it still says on the Steam page that it'll take nine months to finish uh, instead of a couple years. But it has mostly positive reviews though, so people like it. Mountain Blade 2 Bannerlord. Of course, there is a mention of Mountain Blade 2 Bannerlord. It's been in early access for a year now with no solid full release date, I've listed this many times in the past, going back maybe half a decade now, so you know about this one. And I'll put it in the main list again when they announce a full release date. And then Path of Exile 2, this is not really a new game, it's more of an expansion that's an add-on to the original. It's a debate whether these half sequels can be considered new upcoming games or not. Let me know what you think, it's kind of like an Overwatch 2 situation, is it a sequel, is it an expansion? It makes my job difficult. And now, for RPGs that are way further on the horizon, there's Witchbrook. It's a school life RPG game thing that's about a witch in training, like a pixel art Harry Potter. In 2021, it's in development, but little is confirmed, even the platform, so we don't even know if it's a PC game. Kenshi 2 is actually on the way. Kenshi 1 took 10 years to develop, Hopefully with the success of the first game, this goes a bit quicker. Apparently a new Mass Effect game is in the works, but there's no confirmation of very much at all. In Exile, Entertainment is creating two new RPGs. All we know is maybe Cyberpunk, maybe First Person, and they're running in Unreal Engine 5. And Archetype Entertainment is working with Wizards of the Coast to make a sci-fi RPG, but again, no details on this one. And now, going into combat-focused RPGs. There's a few subgenres here, but they're mostly about the combat aspects, but they have RPG elements. In tactical RPGs, we have the Iron Oath. This was supposed to release in 2020, now it's maybe 2021, and it's ending its alpha phase about now. Black Legend, it's a dark, immersive, turn-based strategy RPG. There's a free demo if you want to check this one out. Wilder Myth, a myth-making tactical RPG with overwhelmingly positive reviews on Steam, so you can check this out if you want. Urtuk The Desolation, an open-world tactical turn-based RPG in a low fantasy setting. King Arthur Knight's Tale, a unique hybrid between turn-based tactical games, roguelites, and traditional character-centric RPGs. It's going into early access in 2021. Gloomhaven, the digital adaptation of the acclaimed board game, mixes tactical RPGs and dungeon crawling. And then The Hand of Merlin, a turn-based roguelite RPG in which Arthurian legend clashes with sci-fi horror, which sounds pretty interesting. And then we've got our Souls-like games, starting with Shattered, a Tale of the Forgotten King, challenging boss fights and inspired by Dark Souls and Shadow of the Colossus. Elder Souls, pixel art souls-like where you explore a vast forgotten citadel. Then there's Bleak Faith Forsaken, a kind of technological dark, maybe cyberpunky Dark Souls-like game. 
Alex 2 is still reportedly in the works and there's nothing to show but apparently it's in development and a proper announcement is possibly planned for 2021 but it's unclear. Winterfall, it's going at a crawl through development in 2021 and there's no significant news but apparently it's still going. And then most tentatively, there's Lords of the Fallen 2. The development was delayed and then they got new developers in and then they did it again with a second set of new developers and then I think they did it again? It's unclear if this will ever finish. And now a final run on other notable combat-focused RPG-like games. Going on with The Soul Keeper Chronicles, a dark fantasy open-world RPG featuring three single-player campaigns, each with a different protagonist with different gameplay mechanics. Bio Mutant. Been watching this for a few years now and it should finally be releasing in 2021, maybe. Sea of Stars. Beautiful pixel art and turn-based combat with free traversal. Stone Shard. A lot of people like this one, turn-based RPG with unrestricted character development in a grim medieval world. Tainted Grail, The Fall of Avalon. Save your hometown in this narrative-driven, deck-building, open-world RPG. Ruined King, a League of Legends story. Unite a party of League of Legends champions in this immersive turn-based RPG coming in 2021. Dreamscaper, a dynamic ARPG roguelite that's a blend of brawlers, top-down shooters, and dungeon crawlers. Last Epoch, combining time travel, dungeon crawling, and character customization. Eiter, an action RPG built around exceptional combat and formidable challenges in a mythological Norse world. Creature Keeper, this is one about befriending, raising, and fighting alongside creatures. Bloom Memories, an action RPG where killing is optional, so that's a little bit different. Kingdom of Night, where you're hunting creatures in an 80s Arizona suburb. Undungeon, an action roguelike RPG with dynamic fighting and unusual mechanics. Almost there, Tales of Arise, an anime action RPG that looks pretty interesting. And finally, Project F is a code name for Riot's new mysterious action RPG, which as far as I know, there's no details about it, but you can keep an eye on that space. And that's it. 30 upcoming RPGs plus 40 bonus ones that should be releasing through 2021 and some into 2022 depending on their development. Which ones are you most looking forward to? Oh, so here's something I'd like to know. Do you think RPGs are diversifying enough to have something for everyone? Or is there still something important missing from this myriad of games? There's a lot of titles here, but are they basically the same? Now, if you'd like to see more upcoming games, check out the other lists on the channel sorted by genre shown at the top of the video for many more upcoming PC games. Or you can have a look at my In 2020 X series, where I take an old game and see what it can be remastered, modernized, and upgraded for today, like I did with Daggerfall, Morrowind, and Wasteland. All right, that's all for now. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it and found it useful, and I will see you in the next video.